We're getting powerful new reaction to the bombing of that children's hospital in southern Ukraine. President Zelensky claiming just a little while ago that the attack is proof, his word, proof, that genocide is happening in Ukraine. And he's doubling down on his accusation that Russia is committing war crimes. CNN senior international correspondent Sam Kiley is in the region for us, Sam, even after everything we've seen so far in this brutal war, this bombing certainly stands out as especially ruthless. <clears throat> Yes, Wolf, uh, a new low, but not an unpredictable low. If we look at uh, the profligate disregard for civilian life that the Russians have shown so far, and if we look at the record of Vladimir Putin, of course, particularly in Syria, where there was deliberate targeting of hospitals by uh, Russian aircraft uh, throughout his support there uh, of President Assad. So he's got form for this sort of attack, but even by his standards, it's a new low. This is what it looked like. We're really stretched. Whatever cars you have, send them here. He says airstrike, maternity hospital. This was Russia's response to a global appeal for a ceasefire to evacuate a city of a million people. A bomb dropped next to a maternity hospital in Mariupol. It's hospital number three. Inside, a frantic search for survivors. Early reports say that there were more than a dozen injured, a miraculous outcome to an attempt to amass killing at a place where lives should begin. Many women and children had already fled to underground bunkers after a week of Russian bombardment. Ukraine's president renewed his pleas for NATO to drive Russia from his nation's skies after the hospital airstrike. Everything that the occupiers do with Mariupol is already beyond atrocity. Europeans, Ukrainians, citizens of Mariupol, today we must be united in condemning this war crime of Russia. Evacuations from other towns have been more successful, but still very limited. Around 700 people, mostly women and children, were bussed out of Enegoda, the site of Europe's biggest nuclear reactor, which was captured recently by Russia. The shops are empty. There's nothing there. Not enough medical supplies. We're tired. We need to eat and rest. It may seem extraordinary, but these are the lucky ones. They've escaped from the shadow of a nuclear power station and the clutches of Russian troops. But in comparison to what people are enduring in Mariupol, this is good fortune. Yulia Karyulan volunteers at a refugee centre in Zaporizhia, set up to receive people fleeing her hometown of Mariupol. It's empty. She's been waiting a week for news from home of her husband Evgeny and daughter Yasia. This morning, she got a brief call. How's your daughter doing? My daughter told me she loves me. Of course she does. Actually, how she is, she is alive. What can, she is doing like all other children doing now in Mariupol. Almost no food, no drinking water, no electricity. It was minus five this night. They have no heating. They are just sitting in a cold basement in some courts. Her small family is living in a bomb shelter with hundreds of others. She says they can only survive another few days. Then they will have to surface, perhaps to face more of this. Now, Wolf, of course, the term genocide is much overused. It's a sign, really, of the rhetorical passion that the uh, Ukrainian uh, president feels because he feels so abandoned by the international community over what he says is their failure to impose a no-fly zone to prevent these sorts of continued atrocities and war crimes being committed, Wolf. But, of course, NATO's fear, uh, it very clearly stated, is that if they get involved, that could lead to something far more catastrophic, Wolf. Sam Kiley on the scene for us. Sam, thank you for that report. Stay safe over there, please. Uh, let's go uh, to the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv right now, where air, air raid sirens sounded just a short while ago. Our chief international correspondent, Clarissa Ward, is there for us. Clarissa, you've been reporting on the devastating toll facing Ukrainians after the strike on the hospital. Uh, is there any doubt that Putin is actually targeting civilians? 
Well, well, I think it's always really difficult to differentiate between actively targeting civilians and having a complete disregard for the lives of civilians. But certainly, when you look at some of the places that have been hit in the bombardment over the last week, particularly evacuation routes where civilians were trying to flee to safety, apartment buildings, uh, residential buildings where people were just living with their families. And what's very interesting and very telling and crucially important about this Mariupol maternity hospital is that several hours before this attack took place, the Russian Foreign Ministry spokesperson, Maria Zakharova, warned that, in her words, Ukrainian forces were using the hospital complex as a sort of launch pad for military activity. And she claimed, at that moment, that all staff and patients had been evacuated from that hospital in order to facilitate that military activity. Well, when you look at these images, Wolf, you can see very clearly that there are staff members, that there are patients, that there are children, that there are heavily pregnant women, women who have just given birth, who are bloodied and injured and cut up and having their wounds uh, assisted. So it appears in this case that the Russians understood that this was a hospital. And it becomes very difficult to believe that they actually really genuinely thought that there were no patients and no staff inside that complex uh, being treated. Ultimately, as the mayor of Mariupol said, these are crimes that will have to go to The Hague, potentially, to the International Criminal Court uh, to decide. But as Sam pointed out as well in his reporting, we have seen this before, in Syria particularly, where we know concretely that Russian forces were actively targeting hospitals, Wolf. You know, Clarissa, Mariupol, uh, the city where this attack took place, was supposed to be under a ceasefire though, so that civilians could actually escape. Uh, are any of these five so-called humanitarian corridors actually really safe? Really safe is, is a difficult term to sort of categorize exactly, Wolf. I will say that here in Kyiv today, in the suburbs, which have been so hard hit, roughly 3,000 people, according to Ukrainian authorities and local officials here in Kyiv, were able to get out of some of those hardest hit areas. And there were reports that the bombardment in those areas was a little bit less than it had been before. We also heard uh, that quite a few people were able to escape the northern city of Sumy. Again, that has been the site of just uh, some truly horrific bombardment. But if you look at the sort of broader picture, and you look at Mariupol in particular, where for three straight days now they have tried desperately to get these people out, to get humanitarian aid in, the shelling continues, the bombing continues, and I don't think anyone can call it a true ceasefire, Wolf. Yeah, there's no end in sight, at least uh, right now. Clarissa Ward, uh, be, be careful over there as well. Clarissa's in Kyiv, the Ukrainian capital.